Sometimes when I walk into my office, I get the feeling that I'm walking among the ruins of a lost civilization. Not because of the reigning disorder, but because it feels like the remains of the civilized person I used to be. Where is that damn detective? I'm gonna rip his head off. I swear I'll tear his eyes out. Hey! Hand over the pictures, you bastard. Now! Otherwise, you're gonna be dead meat. Hear me, cat? Do I know you? Your face rings a bell, but... You've been spying on me. You took pictures of me with a lady. <laughs> well, then you'll understand why I didn't really focus on your face, right? I'm gonna kill you! <laughs> Give me the goddamn pictures! It wasn't the first time I regretted hitting a guy like him. But at least I bought enough time to aim at his soft spots. Oh man, you broke my jaw! Well now it matches your marriage. If you show my wife those pictures, I'm dead meat! You'll ruin my life, please! I don't enjoy meddling in others' affairs, but it's my job, and I've got bills to pay. You're the one cheating on your wife, buddy. This is on you. Hey, I'm no two-timer, I swear. It only happened once, for God's sake. I'm just her bodyguard, that's all. She seduced me. I love my wife, honest to God. I, I even quit the damn job for her. You can't break up a family for one tiny mistake. Breaking up your family? I don't think you need my help there, buddy. Okay, how about this? You give me those pictures, and tell her a white lie, and I pay you ten times what she's offering. You save my family, and you make a pretty penny. What do you say? Deal? For as long as I could remember, I had collected nothing more than bad gigs, debt, and sorrow. My self-respect and bank account were racing to see who'd hit rock bottom first. While I hated his offer, it could certainly help me start anew, run some ads in the papers, get better clients. All right. I'll tell your wife you're clean. Get the hell out of here before I regret it, pal. Three. Thank God. Two. Put that money to good use. One. You won't regret helping out Eugene Colbert. I promise you that. My uninvited guest had left me several gifts. First of all, a swollen hand. That guy's skin was hard as a rock. Second of all, more money than I deserved. Third, the feeling that my moral compass wasn't quite as calibrated as I thought. Last but not least, the certainty that more gifts were yet to come. He's a nice guy. <laughs> you see what I said about my pal Black Sad? Doesn't even know you, and he's already offering you a seat. <laughs> Jake, how the hell am I supposed to guess it's you if you don't even knock first? Shut up and listen, buddy. All right? I brought you a client.
That's why we need to find him soon, or we, we will have a very serious problem. Hmm. Thanks for the information and the picture. They'll really come in handy. Let me see if I have this straight. Bobby Yale, a boxer at Dunn's Gym, has a crucial fight against the reigning champion in two weeks. But he disappeared two days ago. Yes. Your father, Joe Dunn, boxing manager and gym owner, hanged himself two days ago. Yes. In short, if Bobby Yale is a no-show for his fight, you'll have to pay a fine. But since you don't have the cash on hand, your father's gym would have to close. Yes. So you want me to find Bobby Yale? Yes. No. Jake wants you to find Bobby. Oh, I see. Well, first of all... Your father took his life the same day his pupil disappeared. Sorry, but something just doesn't add up. Damn it, John. Will you take the case or not? Sure. I know the money is tight, so uh, how about this? If I solve the case, we'll see how much you can pay. I'm sure we'll find a suitable price. I'll search it myself at some point. That cleaning lady, Mariam Purnell, the one who found Joe Dunn's body, she works part-time at Sam's Diner, just down the road on the left, right? That's right. Uh, I think I might uh, pay her a visit as well. And the gym, of course, and see what I can find. Okay, I think I've got enough to start with for now. Is that done? Wow.
What leads a man to do something like this? Life's already dealt me a fair share of blows, but... doesn't add up. Black sad here. Please don't tell me my husband. You have nothing to worry about, Mrs. Colbert. Do me a favor and enjoy your family. Coach, you hear anything about his death? Like said, is that you? You got me. How's everything, Chief? Oh, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Too much work as usual. As for Joe Dunn, he hanged himself. End of story. I'm too busy, John. I can't afford to put a single man on the case. Why are you asking? Joe Dunn's daughter hired me. I just don't get why this guy would hang himself. The gym wasn't making him rich, but one of his pupils was on the rise, headed straight for Madison Square Garden. Well, there's more to life than business. We all have dark secrets, John. Am I right? So, are you going to help me? I wish I could, John. Anyway, I'm afraid I don't have anything useful to share. And it seems like you don't either. But if you do find something, give me a call. I helped you with your little problem when they killed Natalia. Hey, Weekly, this is... John, did you get my pictures? Yes, and... That rhinoceros has one big horn, huh? Uh... And the girl, hot <laughs> damn! You want me to find out her name? Please, pretty please. No, the rhinoceros came by and offered me money to keep quiet. Wow, are we talking petty cash or big bucks? The latter. That's my boy. Good job, Black Sand. Half the money is yours. Actually, I'm working on a case for the gym owner. I'll see what I can do, okay? I'll call you. Thanks, pal. You just made my day.
Good morning, sir. Ah, it's a good morning to you. John Blacksad, Private Eye. Would you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Not at all. Proceed, Your Honor. Have you seen anything unusual lately? Yes, indeed, kind prince. My pretty little eyes just saw a pink elephant parade. <laughs> but naturally, I decided to join in the fun. <coughs> is there anything I can do for you? Well, there is indeed. Move. You're blocking my view of this wonderful sunset. <laughs> it just so happens that you can, Apple of my eye, do this old man a favor and bring him some sustenance. <laughs> All right. I might just be the last person in New York without a TV. Maybe that's how I should spend the bribe money. He opened it during the war? That's odd. Mary Purnell, the person who found Dunn's body, works a block away from the gym. I'm certain she can give me the kind of information that... Hey! Watch where you're going, you jerk! You looking for trouble, moron? You better watch it. Go to hell, man! You better not show your face around here! And there you go. We'll miss you at Sam's Diner. Come back soon. Welcome to Sam's Diner. What can I get for you? Black Sad, Private Eye. 
I work for Sonia Dunn. I need to ask you some questions about Joe Dunn. Um, sure. But I'm working right now. <laughs> Maybe later? I only see one customer sitting at the counter, and he's asking for your cooperation. All right. What can you tell me about Sonia Dunn? I barely know her, but she looks like a smart girl, poor thing. Let's talk a bit more about Joe Dunn. How was Joe Dunn outside the gym? I wouldn't know. I only saw him at the gym or right there. That was his spot. I think everyone liked him. Can you tell me how you found Dunn's body? Well, I thought I was alone. I clean early in the morning before Mr. Dunn comes in. Oh, so you have keys to the gym? Yes, of course. There was paint on the floor, so I thought it'd be a busy morning. And then I saw him, hanging there, like a baby mobile over a crib. Then I think I panicked. When I calmed down, I called the police and waited outside. Sorry, that's all I can say. Don't worry. But if you remember anything else, let me know. What kind of boss was Joe Dunn? A good one. Always paid on time, never raised his voice. If I asked for the day off, he even cleaned the gym. Thanks, but I still don't get why he'd commit suicide. I heard his relationship with his daughter wasn't ideal. Oh, really? Poor man. I don't have kids, but that has to be really hard. His wife died years ago. Maybe he never got over it. Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe he did. That was a long time ago. Maybe he simply had money issues. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Could be. The gym didn't really get that dirty lately. Any ideas where Bobby Yale could be? How... how am I supposed to know? He's rarely there when I clean the gym. Bobby seems like a nice kid, but I... I barely know him. Can I have a hamburger, please? Oh, sure. Regular or cheese? I think I'll get the cheeseburger. Mm-hmm. You want fries? A drink? No, that's it. Okay. Is that for here or to go then? To go, please. Mm -hmm. One cheeseburger to go, Sam. Okay! Her handwriting is nice and neat. <laughs> Smells like cinnamon. No, cinnamon and burgers.
Your burger is ready. you enjoy your meal. Four people used the back door that very same night. Huh? Well, I might be blind as a bat, but as you can certainly see, I have two wonderfully functional ears. <laughs> Four people used the back door two days ago? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Who was the first person to use the back door? Someone big. Unlocked the door, stepped inside, <laughs> then came right back out. Who was the second person to use the back door? A man. Just a few minutes after the first person. He came back out muttering, Ungrateful bastard. Then, he threw something in the trash and walked back in. Oh, no, wait. Before that, he gave me a coin. A coin? I mean, do I look like I need spare change, huh? I mean, I'm staying at the Million Star Hotel, for God's sake. <laughs> Who was the third person to use the back door? Judging by the quiet footsteps, I'd say it was someone small. I'd say it was... A about 30 minutes after the second person came out. Whoever it was threw something in the trash and stood in front of me for a moment. Then, I heard a click. And finally, I heard trailing laughter in that direction. Who was the fourth person to use the back door? Someone big. I recall heavy breathing. The person left in a hurry, running in that direction. <laughs> I wonder what it's like to be blind. Would I cope? Looks like someone used it as a punching ball. Blind and legless. How does he get by? Blind and legless. How does he get by? Where did you get that paint can? In the trash can, in the back. I found it right after the comings and goings. I wanted to see what those people were leaving behind. You were acting a bit strange before, but now you seem fine. Why is that? Hey, you got great vision, sense of smell, and hearing. Why is that? Well, I'm a cat. Well, I'm a goat. There's a chest expander in your cart. A what expander? A thingamajig with three springs. Oh, the thingamajig with springs. Oh, I, I got it from the trash back there. A paint can and a thingamajig with springs. What a night.
blind and legless. How does he get by? Could he have been a train conductor? That's all for now. Thanks. I better leave these two alone. 